Well, three years ago, Robert Schuller was our guest on this program. Let's take a look back at part of his interview. I was installed as the senior pastor of the Christ Cathedral in January of 06. Mm -hmm. I was the senior pastor there for two and a half years, and I want to thank my father and, and everybody else who made that possible. But uh, the long and short of it is I have... I have four sisters, and uh, they're all involved in the ministry, and they're all, they have husbands, and they're all involved. And, um, and I just didn't feel it was appropriate to divide the ministry uh, the way they wanted it divided. Mm. And so the bottom line was I, I believed that it was time for me to leave. Aren't there some problems associated with that? I mean, it's, it's, for it's, Crystal Cathedral itself, for, the, yeah. for that ministry, if there's not defined succession... Correct. Um, at some point in time, you look out into the future and say, what's the future? Yeah. Well, at this point, I was removed from that position to make any decisions about what's going to happen mm -hmm. in the future of that ministry. Well, he was being very polite. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> How do you resist? I'm still very polite. What do you, you mean? Still, <laughs> you're still very polite. You, I, I noticed you were being a little cautious with what you're saying. Um, how, how do you resist now the temptation to say, I told you so? Well, it, it, there, there's, it, doesn't do any, it doesn't do any good, and, uh, and life goes on. You know, I'm, I'm a firm believer that God puts things in people's lives for a purpose and for a reason, that as, as pastors, as ministers, um, we're not going to be here forever. Uh, our ministries are not going to last forever. And, and God puts, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And God puts certain people in our lives for a particular reason, and we have a particular course we take, and, and there's a beginning and there's an end. And just because there's an end to something doesn't mean it's over. It's, it's just an opportunity for new beginnings. Well, I hear the hope in your voice, but there has to have been some kind of grieving here. here here's something that Oh, uh, you is. know, your dad put his life into, and mm -hmm. your whole family put their lives into. Yeah. You know, I know you were raised in, in ministry, mm -hmm. and to see it all go, uh, and go in such a public way, it has to, it has to hurt. My grieving started uh, in July of 08. Mm -hmm. So I've been grieving been this whole thing for the past three and a half, four years. And you saw it coming. And I'm, oh, it, it, on July 8th, uh, no, it was July 9th, 2008, um, uh, I knew that, that it was over. It was all over. What the decisions they were making and the directions they were taking. Um, and, um, and so I started grieving at that point. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, so, so now the cathedral has been sold. And the out, and the, there's still a congregation there. There's a congregation of about 1,100 people that continue to, to meet there every wow. Sunday. And it looks like they may be moving to another location. And, and uh, they definitely will move to another location in the next three years, but it'll probably be sooner than, than later. Mm -hmm. um, there is the, the Hour of Power broadcast, which could continue. In fact, it is still on Lifetime and Discovery and and Trinity Broadcasting Network, to, to mention three. So I don't know what the future is there, but, they're, but they've started using some of, some of my old material back from 2008 yeah. and 2007. <laughs> That's strange for you. Yeah, it is. I'm watching, I, I go and I watch it, and I just go, oh, look oh. at that. I'm in a row again. I used to know that but, guy. Yeah, exactly. That's about <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, have, you, have you reconciled uh, with your sisters? Is that... D do you know what? I'm in the process, process. of doing that. Yeah, but um, it's really fresh, and I, th for them, yeah, for them, it's very fresh and it's very raw right now. Um, they were asked to leave only a, a few weeks ago, basically. So, it, like I said, it's it's very very. It, I don't think the timing is right for me to really try to do something there. Uh through all of this, how, how do you come to a point of forgiveness where you, where you let it go? You know, that's, that's really what this show is all about today. Yeah. You know, it's forgiveness. The music's about forgiveness. And, and, um, and so I, I'm really honored to be part of this show and be able to talk about this because forgiveness is such an important part. 
Now, Jesus, it's probably been quoted a, a, a hundred times on, uh, today and probably another hundred times, and that is that Jesus told us to forgive 70 times seven. And, um, and we need to do that just in one day. <laughs> <laughs> just in one day. And then the next day, do it 70 times 70 again. So that because, happens to you too, huh? <laughs> yeah, because what happens, especially when somebody's really hurt you bad, you know, huh. you've really been slammed. You, you, you just constantly, these thoughts come into your mind. It's like, if only, if this, why did this happen? Why did that happen? And, and you can just really, if you don't just tackle that every single time and just tell yourself, forget it. Don't go there. Don't don't be this way. Forgive. And, you, and so in the course of a day, you could literally 70 times 7 because those thoughts will come in. And, it's, and, and, and if you don't put those away and say, hey, forget about it, it'll destroy you. Well, why is it harder to forgive when you're right? That's a good question. <laughs> um, well, I think, I think if you're... If you've, because if, when you're right, you, you're the one who's been offended, typically, I guess this would be the answer to that. Um, um, but it's, it's always hard to forgive when you haven't done anything wrong and you've been a victim. Um, that's really when you need to forgive the most. Um, so, well, that's, what that's happens when, when you don't? When you when you want to hold the real question. when you hold on to Regardless. I'm right or I'm victim or what you did is wrong and and, and I need justice uh, and and until I have justice I'm not going to be happy. That's the that's the key. Number one, you cannot create your happiness around around trying to get justice around trying to make circumstances or situations in your life a certain way. Because, believe it or not, we're not in control. <laughs> I mean, it, it's really hard for people to, get a, to, to come to that, that to grasp with the fact that we are not in control. You know, the, the first three steps in a 12-step program, anybody who's involved in recovery uh, of any addictions, of any life, deals with, the, so, drills with these three. I can't. He can. Let him. Right. Okay? And, and that's good good theology it's good uh it's it's a good way to live it's a good way to think it's a good way to feel i can't he can let him and so we begin to accept that we begin our day in thanksgiving for what god has given to us instead of instead of living in bitterness and and trying to constantly say if only this had happened if only i could do that and we can start blaming ourselves and we need to forgive ourselves there's a lot going on there, that, actually, for me, that was one of, <laughs> one of the hardest things I ever had to do yeah. is forgive myself. I, 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 yeah. You know, because I knew. And, and then, then you're into a whole different thing there. Anyway, your book. Yeah. I've, been, I've been in your book all this oh, week. You. When you're down to nothing, God is up to something. Yeah. And one of your chapters, you deal specifically with having to lean hard into theology to make sense of what, what was going on with you. You really had to acknowledge... God, you're sovereign. Yes, you've given us free will, mm -hmm. but you're sovereign, and I'm going to lean into you. I, I can't do this. Well, why is it so important to really just surrender to say, I, I don't control, and, and I'm not in control of the situation, but you can, and I'm going to trust you? Well, like I said, you can't. Uh, I can't. He can't let him. Is like For me, has been a foundation of my life. Sounds like you've been saying that every day. I do. Absolutely. I say that every single day. That's part of my prayer for a living. Well, I can't. You, you can. Let me be part of your plan, Lord. And that's really, that's really what, what living is. Uh, that's a prayer my father taught me. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> Not my plan. God, I want to be part of your plan. Precisely. You know, my plans, yeah. my expectations for my future are going to be wrong. But yours are going to be right. Exactly. So not my plan, but let your plan. Oh, can yeah. I be part of your plan? Can I come alongside you? Yeah. And it's, it's a much better way to go. You've taken yeah. on some real challenges, not just one cable network. You've got two, yeah. which in this day and age, I, I, I go, you know, go Robert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because uh, yeah. that's hard. It's hard yeah. to build one now. How's it going? Well, we're not building them. We bought ones that were already existed, and they're growing. 
You yeah. still got to build them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're they're growing. They're doing well, and uh, the company is doing great. So I'm really excited about that and, and the challenges and the opportunities that come along with it. And uh, it's it's again the whole concept that if you follow God's will for your life, He's going to lead you into places you never in a million years would have anticipated. But that's what God's all about. He's in, he, God's in the in the business of of taking people who are broken, who are down to nothing. And I was at that place where I was down to nothing, mm -hmm. and out of nothing, He created something. You know, one of my favorite songs is from the from the movie Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. It's from the ashes come the roses of success, and I don't want to sing it for you, but but it's a. Oh, please do. <laughs> <laughs> from the ashes come the roses. From the ashes come the roses. Come the ashes come the roses of success. Yeah, but but. So there you go. Yeah, you, you, you can applaud me for that one, you know. But but anyway, that's you know that's that's from that's that's where God how God works. He takes the ashes and he takes when we when we're down to that nothingness. And from there, he builds a life that comes to a point where they recognize the fact they wouldn't be where they are mm -hmm. if it wasn't totally due to God's sovereignty and grace and recreation. And that's the kind of person God can really work with. A yeah. lot of Americans right now are going through that. They're going through the loss of a job, mm -hmm. loss of a home, um, and a lot of people are saying, where do we go now? And, and what, we, what do we do now? What would you tell them to do? Do anything. Hmm. Do anything. Wake up that day and do something. Take a walk. Pick up the phone. Go through your, your Rolodex and, or... Rolodex don't exist anymore, do they? <laughs> That's a thing from the past. You can scroll, scroll through your phone list and say, okay, who shall I talk to today? And just start calling people. Do, do anything, literally do anything. And then what will happen is God will, something will spark, God will move, and, and you'll, you'll have a conversation that you never anticipated Suddenly, somebody will hear something they never heard before, um, and and God will start to move because it's it's the old it's the old concept where even God can't steer a parked car, which I don't believe. <laughs> I think He can somehow. He can but, move it anywhere but, he wants to. <laughs> but you know, it's the, it's the idea. Even God can't yeah. steer a parked car, and so if we're parked, if we're just sitting there in our in our bedroom or 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 or, or, or our, our living room saying, "Oh Lord." Oh, Lord, please do something for me. Oh, Lord, please do something for me. And we sit there all day long saying, Oh, Lord, please do something for me. And we're a parked car. And then we, we get to the end of the day and say, You know, if only God would do something for me, I, my life would start to start to change. You're getting into a life transformation company. Yes. And, and you're going to do this for people. So yes. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's a total life transformation company. It's and uh, it's it's a brand new company that I'm working with. I'm going to be coaching people through life transformation. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of different areas of life. I think everyone has seen uh, different pie charts of of physical, financial, spiritual, family, recreation. Those pie charts, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and a balanced life. But I've never seen a pie chart with except for the one that I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> where you have a circle in the middle of the pie chart. Mm. And the circle in the middle of the pie, pie chart is, is power. Because then the pie chart becomes a wheel. And wheels move, and wheels change, and wheels transform, and wheels go place. Pies get eaten. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and wheels move down the road. And so... Real you quick, let me, let, real quick, the power is hope. 15 seconds. The power is hope, and hope comes from faith, just a mustard seed of faith, and it can make, you can move mountains. All right, Robert's latest book is When You Are Down to Nothing, God is Up to Something, it's available wherever books are sold.